In this bulletin, there is confusion over who allowed Boomer, a McCoy woman test positive for COVID, and Fiji commended for handling second wave. Good morning, Fiji. The confusion around allowing people to move from containment to non-containment areas has left even the health officials confused. This comes after revelations over the weekend saw some move from containment areas to towns such as Singatoka and Ba. Health Permanent Secretary Dr. James Fong says he has been left confused as to how this happened despite his clear instructions. When asked by FBC News on who will be held responsible for this action, Dr. Fong says it's hard to point a finger. As far as uh, moving towards uh, taking some people into to answer for the actions on the ground, at this point in time, you know, like with this fight I've been mentioning, you know, the last thing we want to do now is to go and uh, castigate every misstep or to come down hard on every misstep. Eh? We just have to respond to the situation. A woman from Kalokalo Crescent in Makoi Nasinu has tested positive for COVID-19, but no link has been established on how she contracted the virus. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Wong says they are treating this case as a community transmission while investigation continues. The woman presented herself at the Makoi Health Center. The center has been closed as the ministry conducts its contact tracing, testing and has activated its isolation protocols. After 1,380 tests, we have one new case to announce. The new case is a woman from uh, Kalokalo, Makoi, who presented to Makoi Health Center today with COVID uh, symptoms. She was tested today and uh, turned positive. The Permanent Secretary for Health has clarified the purpose of establishing emergency medical assistance team field hospitals. Dr. James Fong says the FEMAT field hospitals are designed to treat people who would normally go to the hospital or the Lotoka hospital rather for acute cases, accidents, childbirths and other non-elective surgeries. He adds the Lotoka hospital which is on lockdown is primarily for the care of COVID patients. We are doing this because we don't want to put non-infected patients in the same hospital with the infected patients. There is a risk of transmission. And we can't have medical staff going from one group of patients to another group of patients. Movement across Vitilevu is currently restricted for essential purposes only. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says the purpose of uh, limiting movement is to limit mixing between people. Dr. Fong says their next steps are being informed by the best available signs. He adds they will be taken based on the data gathered from uh, contact tracing and testing with advice from other ministries and the experts from the WHO. He stresses that from an epidemiological, economic, and employment standpoint, they are considering all angles of this wide-reaching crisis. We are dealing with a highly transmissible variable and several unknown chains of transmission. So we want people to operate in bubbles, stay in bubbles as much as possible. If the virus stays with one person and that person does not mix with other people, the virus eventually dies because it has no new host to go to. The Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association is working with the health ministry to ensure Fiji is COVID contained while generating economic activities. The association says profit is not the priority for the hoteliers in the capital. Hotels in Suva will be used as quarantine facilities and while this will provide the much needed boost for workers, the industry says it will be enough to cover operational costs. Association Chief Executive Fantasha Lockington says hotels will be providing accommodation at a low cost as they are aware of the pressure on the health ministry. Lockington says selected hotels will need to have trained wellness ambassadors. These are rates that is affordable to uh, the ministry so that they can keep their quarantine people in. Uh, you will find that it's um, done at such a low rate that it's just able to pay the staff and the operational costs and sometimes it is actually provided at under cost because they understand that you know that's that's basically what the budget is the australian government has uh, commended fiji for its handling of the second wave of the covid 19 outbreak 
It joins New Zealand in acknowledging our efforts to contain the virus as more stringent health measures have been imposed locally. The Australian government has already provided 10,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine and 2,000 kilograms of personal protective equipment. Minister for International Development and the Pacific, Zed Saselja, says it's a true Bubale Australia stands ready to provide further assistance. And obviously, uh, we're mindful of how well Fiji has handled uh, the COVID situation uh, through border closures and other measures, keeping it under control, uh, obviously having no cases for a long time, and uh, we're mindful of the current challenges. In an effort to safeguard Fijians from contracting COVID-19, banks say they are continuously sanitizing and wiping down their automated teller machines. Association of Banks Chair Rakesh Ram says banks have full-time cleaners who ensure this is carried out on a daily basis. Ram says uh, customers also have a role to play. We have cleaners full-time sanitizing and wiping our, our ATMs, our, our branches, our, our uh, teller areas. It means surfaces where the virus can uh, dwell. Eh? So uh, when you touch something and you touch your face, then uh, you can um, have the virus. Up ahead, Team Fiji confident and Karawalevu shares debut experience. Stay with us. Welcome back. With two months away from the Tokyo Olympic Games, Team Fiji is confident more sports will be able to make it to the international meet. At the moment, four sports will have a chance to compete at the biggest, at uh, the world biggest sporting stage. Aquila Dama has more. Despite a COVID-19 stricken world, he believes its squad will increase. So we have one from athletics. That will be a male athlete. We have two from swimming, so that will be a male and female, and for judo. So far, only rugby sevens for both men and women. It was a special moment for former Morris Brothers High School under-18 captain Vuate Karolevu to debut for the Sydney Roosters over the weekend. Topped with a 28-20 win, the Kandavu native scored a try for the Roosters in the 35th minute. The former Naitasiri halfback is optimistic about his future. Oh, it was an uh, unforgettable experience. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, <coughs> thankful to the Lord for finally giving me the opportunity to play with my brothers. Um, <coughs> getting that uh, debut try was a bonus for me. Ensuring player welfare is priority for the Navua Football Association during these challenging times. Majority of the players are dependent on the sport for income, but with all events on hold, they are facing challenges. Association Secretary Seini Tonga says they've organized a food drive to help these players. She says that the committee has exhausted its fund and has been forking out money from their pockets. Their main source of income is the game where the committee provide their, their contracted rates, their allowances, their accommodation. So in this challenging period, they don't have a source of income. And we've been helping them out um, with uh, food, uh, food packs and anything else that uh, we can help out with, with the players. However, we thought to do a food drive campaign. We'd like to seek the public's assistance on that. Cloudy periods with brief showers are expected over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, mainly fine. That's FBC Morning News. Join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For news you can trust, get the facts from FBC's TV, radio and digital news at fbcnews.com.fj. Take care and good morning. <laughs>